Okay, I got more to show you, and now we're getting to more advanced topics, all right? So you saw the kind of the elementary topics, you saw the plugins, you saw how we do a uh, RESTful endpoint interaction, how to run it on the device. Uh, pretty much you have all the tools you need at that point to kind of build your application in a very cool way. Um, I could show you more about the accelerometer and battery status, maybe I'll do that in a future recording. Uh, but you can see you can change geolocation over here, and battery status and accelerometer settings. Maybe we'll have some more fun with that in a little bit, but um, for now, Let's just kind of keep moving here because I want to show you uh, a really cool new capability we added in um, we added in JBoss Developer Studio 8, and you've already saw the the palette over here that we had for jQuery Mobile, but we also have an Ionic palette now, and that's a, a really new cool item because what's happening inside the uh, HTML5 space, JavaScript framework space is Angular JS. Angular JS is definitely happening, and Ionic is happening with Angular JS. Ionic basically gives you the user interface controls you need for a nice mobile application based on AngularJS that's wrapped with Cordova and deploys to the phone. So Ionic is optimized for Cordova. So I'm gonna show you how we get started with Ionic. Um, it does involve a little bit of work, so I'm gonna to come to the command line, all right? And so I'm sitting here at the command line and I have a tool called Ionic at the command line. And so you gotta go through the NPM install, installation process. That means you have to install Node.js on uh, Windows or Mac or Linux, and you have this NPM tool for installing things like Ionic, but that gives you the tools you need to really get going. Um, the, if you just look at the Ionic Framework website, you'll see exactly how to do that installation. I won't walk you through that for now, uh, but just let me show you this aspect. Again, this is kind of an advanced topic. It's not for everybody. Uh, let's see if I can remember the command line, though. So, uh, well, let's do this first. mkdir Ionic projects, how about that? Uh, projects, okay. And I'm out here in my directory where I have EAP installed. I've downloaded the mobile product, which we haven't showed you that yet, the mobile product server-side stuff. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and then I have JBoss Developer Studio installed right there, including my workspace, so you can kind of see it all right there. Um, now we've got um, Ionic projects. Let's, let's jump over there. Ionic start, uh, let's call this the, uh, well, let's just call this um, hybrid uh, we have 301, 3001, let's go 4001. <laughs> and I'm gonna call this uh, tabs. So tabs is the template you want. You have blank tabs and side menu in Ionic land. If I did that correctly, you can see it goes through its download process and it's gonna build me a template project on my hard drive right there. Uh, so I can actually open it up with TextMate if I want to. You can kind of see what it looks like. Same structures before with plugins and www. Um, and then you can kind of see the index HTML there. So let's kind of, let's pull that into JBoss Developer Studio now and have some fun with it. All right, so the tricky part here is knowing that we not only have a, a new project, but you also can import an existing project into Cordova land. That's another new feature. Uh, so I'm gonna type Cordova here, and I'm gonna say import Cordova project, and I'm gonna say browse, and I'm gonna come over here and go to mobile and Ionic projects and hybrid 4001. Now one thing that's a bit of a gotcha in the current environment, the current installation I have here, we are working to correct it, is to notice there's a, this plugins directory which has items in it. You'll wanna go ahead and just kinda of memorize those real quickly. Ionic keyboard, console, device, very straightforward. Delete them before you import this project, all right? So I'm gonna come over, back over here and I'm gonna say, um, uh, yeah, I change in that directory and I'm gonna go to plugins, okay? And so, yeah, it's just RAM and boom, uh, is a directory, oh lord, rmdir, and let's see, will that work? <laughs> no, it's not empty, rmdir, rf, let's see if that work. Okay, rmdir, dash rf, and then, kind of, and then, bump. All right, so now you can see here, I can't remember my basic, Unix commands anymore. Okay, so we did that one. Um, uh, org Apache. Uh, okay, helps if you get the whole thing spelled out correctly there. Actually, that might have done it. All right. Nope. Uh, RF. Org Apache. You can tell I rehearsed this on a regular basis. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Deep there. Finally. Okay. Shame on me. All right. So that's empty. That's an empty directory now. You can see right there. So let's import it. Let's hit open. I'm gonna select the project name, copy into workspace, hit finish. All right, so there's hybrid 4001. 
look at the config XML, kind of get, see what that looks like, com ionic framework, and there's the ID number and the name, just leave that alone for now. Uh, but let's come in here and look at what this guy looks like. So let's click on index.html. All right, this is an Angular JS application. So you can see there's these three JS files. Um, there's of course this lib directory which has the Ionic and Angular JS components inside it. Uh, you can see that right here. All right, so Angular is installed, Ionic's installed. Um, but watch what happens when we just do a run on Cordova Sim. Okay, so this app looks a little bit different. It's much cooler than what we previously had. So let's run on Cordova Sim. And so there it goes. All right, so I'm going to move this over here again so we can kind of get a like, get to see things. And now let's open up the templates. All right, so by default, it, it sets everything up as templates. You can see it's a three tab user interface using tab navigation. There's also the side menu, which is like the menu I did earlier. Let's click on the dash here. Uh, let's go to, so let's just double, I always like double checking my, um, my live reload. All right, and it did not live reload. Why is that? Looks like it started. Uh, oh, gotta enable it there. There we go. So now we're live reloading. And so I like checking that real quick. So there's the dash, um, the dashboard. And so let's kind of have a little fun with it. So let's come in here and we're gonna add the, um, let's add a list, right? From this little guy over here. And uh, so I can add the list items. Yeah, let's just say, uh, let's say I want milk. I'm just kind of making this up. Um, but you can kind of basically add just basic list items and then pick a little uh, cool icon. So uh, Ionic has cool icons for things. So maybe I want the ion bag there. And then I want to go to the second guy here and I want beer. Um, oh, and now I got to remember where the beer one is. There it is, fantastic. And then I, <laughs> and then I want something else. I want, you know, um, trash bags. I'm kind of making things up here as I go. But you can kind of see what it looks like. You can get a you can get a representation of what this thing looks like before you pop it in, and that might be what you want. And so Ionic has some nice uh, nice capability there. Oh, that's my previous project. Let's go ahead and close that Cordova sim down. Um, but that's that's basically what it looks like. Now it gets a little more sophisticated than this, right? This is Angular JS. It's a really powerful concept for MVC. Um, so that's cute that I could do that. But watch what happens here. If you notice, there's Scruff McGruff GI Joe. All of this on the friends tab here. Let's go look at the tab friends, and you can see it says friend.name here. All right, so there's the ng repeat friend and friends. So it's basically loading onto the user interface all the friends, individual friend records that it finds in the friend data structure, right? Um, and that was set up over here in the services. So if I go to the services.js, you can see this is the factory for friends, and this is also where you inject your REST endpoints. So if you're going out to enterprise REST endpoints, this is where you'd pull them in into the services area. Uh, you can see here I have an ID and a name. Um, the cool thing about that is if I come over here and say uh, bump bump friend.id, and you can see, whoop, you can see there's the friend and ID there, right? So there's the ID and there's the name. Um, so let's kind of have a little more fun with this. Let's let's uh, come in here and add phone, and and let's give them a phone number. Okay, and let's give this one a phone number. Um, you know what? Let's just copy and paste this so you don't see me fumble away typing here. We've already been uh, we've already made you suffer through that once already. So you know, just give different different phone numbers here just so I can see it look different. Uh, dun -dun -dun. And whoop, gotta get the Got to get the com in there, and dun, 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 dun. all right. So if I did this right, this is what you get when you live demo and record at the same time. Okay. So let me go back to tab friends. All right. Let's. Uh, so there's our zero and one. So now let's do the drill down. So this is the drill down on the Scruff McGruff. That's the friend detail. So I can come over here now and say I want uh, friend dot phone. Boom, boom. And there's the phone number for Scruff McGruff. All right, so that might, that's how you can interactively develop your application. Again, if you this is a common way to work with AngularJS applications or develop them is to use fictitious data or um, mock data, if you will, right here inside um, uh, your services environment. You can also look at the controllers right here. So again, there's an MVC style architecture where the controller is a controller, and there's your main app.js, which kind of sets everything up. Okay, but you can build an Ionic based application and interact with it right here uh, and then of course if you decide you want to run it on the Android device again we can do that so run on Android device and it'll go through the process of building it 
uh, in store yeah yes okay I would like to make that change and and this is because since I did the import it was not yet associated with the right for Cordova and it's run here so it's good that you see me make that specific mistake because you might run into that and it might confuse you so if you've just done the import it won't quite know yet that you're attached to the Cordova engine and which version you want and then you do the uh, run as on Android here and you can see it's going through the Android build process it builds the Android project uh, and then of course we'll deploy it out to the actual phone uh, but let's, while that's working there all right let's just kind of walk through this a little bit more again you can see under JS app JS controller JS service JS all the Ionic Angular stuff sets up under lib and that all came from the command line and then you have your base templates and there is a side menu as well if I come back down here to the command line uh, okay I can basically say Ionic um, start uh, hybrid 5001 and call it side menu and that'll give me the style of menu you saw earlier I was building that Facebook style menu that slides off to the left and everything else so that's another nice template to get started with and you can import that guy and it looks like my app is now deployed let's get over here so there it is on the device and I can go to friends and I can drill down on scruff McGruff there and there's the phone number for it um, you know and look at the other navigate around the application itself okay so again build the app quickly inside the tooling environment and then deploy it out to the phone to see how it behaves on the device itself and of course if you have a different array of devices you're trying to support with different CPU and memory you know especially in the Android world uh, you can have a lot of different memory a lot of different CPU kind of things different screen resolution in this case it's a larger device because it's a Nexus 7 you know you want to test on the real device so that's very critical so that's why we try to make that as easy as possible to deploy the device right within the IDE. All right, well, there'll be more to show you in a minute.